Hello and welcome to Des Illustrates. Today we are gonna paint a rhino beetle. This sketch is one of the sketches that was downloadable over on my Patreon. Every month there I make five drawings like this. It can be of beetles, of butterflies, birds, any kind of animal. And I make uh, scan them and make them available over on Patreon to download so you can either frame them and hang them on the wall or paint them in yourself if you would like to and yeah today we're gonna paint the rhino beetle first off i'm starting on the head for the head that's totally black but where the sun hits it it gets muted gray and white and some areas that are hit by the sun even have a touch of brown in it the same kind of brown that we will be using later on on the shield on its back first off i'm just blocking in main shapes and not worrying too much about all the little details of the beetle uh, on its head Right now we're almost done with the blocking in phase of the head of the beetle. I kept it really rough with the colors and the shapes and I'm gonna build up a lot of more detail later on when I also balance out the color of the beetle with the rest of the body and the legs because I find often the tones of the colors and the values mostly of the colors will change if you change the rest of the painting so for example if i would add a really dark background behind this the tones of the head would change dramatically and i find that's also the same if you paint the rest of the subject so the legs are also going to be various shades of black and brown and the back shield of this bead was going to be a reddish brown in totally um, but with a bit of a shine on it that i made a bit of reddish purple almost and uh, that's totally gonna change the appearance of the beetle in total again now also on the legs i'm just blocking in the main shapes making sure there's color everywhere before i'm going in later to add all the tiny little details
Right now we are starting out the back of the beetle, his shield. For the shield I am mixing the red that you can just see in the top left corner of the image here. It's a bit of a, I would say on the warm side, because the other one that I have is in this set is a cool red. Um, the set I'm using, by the way, is the Van Gogh, or uh, I mean the Royal Talent Squash set that I reviewed earlier on this channel. And I mixed that red uh, with a bit of black to make it less bright. And I did that in various tones, so more red, more black, to create the transition on the shield from dark to light from where the light was hitting it and the other place uh, where the shadows were falling for the highlight that I'm putting in right now or the beginning of the highlight I used a bit of white with the red and a bit of black to, to tone the, the color down a bit to, to merge the red and uh, you can already see here that I'm starting to put in some details on the head here and there but mainly I'm still blocking in all the parts of the beetle For as long as I could, I tried to use a big brush, but here you can see I switched over to a smaller brush for the final details. The big brush I find helps with putting in the first layers, because in the first layers you just want to put in all the colors everywhere, so you have a base to work upon and to build upon, and if you go into the fine details too much in the first stages, then a lot of those are gonna be lost later on because you're gonna put on more layers so you are giving yourself more work which is not gonna be visible in the end result you can see that I'm also putting the brown in the legs and that I also put a bit of shine that 
tends to be a bit more brown and gray on the head but not enough to say oh it's brown but also just enough to say oh there is a bit of brown in there because that was what i was seeing in reference i was using the reference that i was using is one photo from pixabay i will link this photo in the description below so if you want to paint this beetle too then that's gonna be in the description and if you want uh, the line art um, I already said this but it's uh, it's over on my page yeah. right now I'm starting on the details in the brown parts both on the legs and on its shield for a bit there I was a bit struggling with the tones of the shield I was seeing uh, really simple colors, really flat tones of brown and black in the reference but when I was putting it on um, simplified on the shield it looked different but I found that I just needed to, to put more layers on I often find in this stage that I'm not happy with how it looks in the, it's about the middle stage where I blocked everything in and I just started to put in details and that's for me most of the times the ugly stage in both my gouache painting as my watercolor paintings and it's the stage where you have to push through and you have to continue to paint and after a while if you keep painting it will look better and better until you're happy with how it looks Right now I'm redefining the eye. I found that in the blocking in stage that I lost the shape of the eye and um, I intentionally didn't look too much at it in the beginning stage when I was using the bigger brush but now that I'm putting in the details that was an area that needed more focus and also the shine on the beetle's head so the highlights made a lot of difference in the appearance of the beetle's head I found on the nose I suppose it is or the horn on its nose that I forgot the second horn so I'm putting that in there and I'm also putting in the highlights and again that helps with uh, defining the shapes of the heads and where one horn ends and the other begins I'm also brightening up the highlights on the main part of the head again and redefining some of the shadows and as you can see putting together this painting even with all the colors that were already done really depends on the details in the final phase and this is why I said earlier 
that there's no need to put in this much detail in the beginning phase with a tiny brush because you will be painting over a lot of it if not all and you will do double work in that case I used to do this a lot myself putting in highlights and putting in details right away but I have taught myself of um, I'll try at least to restrain doing this and um, I'm finding that it made my painting process a lot easier and a lot smoother and now we are starting to put in the details and the highlights on the legs um, not all of these highlights were as the, uh, visible on the reference picture I had but I wanted it to be a bit more pronounced where the leg was ending and where one part was or they have also these little thorns or they look like thorns on their legs and I wanted to be that to be a bit more defined a bit more visible than it was in reference same on the other leg I put a bit more highlights in there then there was in the reference and also around the shield you can see me on this painting jumping around a lot then I'm working on the head and then I'm working on the shield I tend to do this in all my paintings no matter what medium I work in I find that if you put in the details all at the same time all over the painting and also block in the whole painting at the same time that you have a better picture of the painting as a whole and that the painting ends up in, more in balance in the end than if you would do the head at first and put in all the details and the head is all finished and then you're gonna do the shield and then you're gonna do the legs they are not gonna feel like one painting they're gonna feel separated and sometimes even unbalanced and in, after that you're gonna need to go back in to bring it all together with more paint and more layers which will give you more work in the end so yeah I definitely recommend to uh, make the painting as a whole and work on all of it I realize that this is not the same for everyone and that some people find it a bit overwhelming to work on the whole painting especially if it's a bigger piece and that everyone has its own methods in the end but for me this worked the best and if you have problems with getting your piece together and making it feel in balance then I will definitely recommend trying out to paint the whole painting at once in the same stage so first block in everything then uh, then uh, put in all the shadows then put in all the highlights and all the details and do the same thing all over the painting and also bring back some of the colors in the rest of the painting like I brought some black in the shield and I brought some brown in its head and that way it balances out each other and you can also see that I built up something in a lot of layers like right now I'm going back to the highlights again and I'm putting more details inside the highlights and in the head I'm finding that the more layers you put over something the more realistic it tends to look in the end because uh, any animal or subject or flower anything really it's not simple flat colors there are a lot of little details and the more layers you put on it even with gouache it's quite opaque but layering on top of each other and also letting some of the previous layers shine through will make that complexity that the subject in this case the beetle has shine through into the painting with this painting we're almost coming to an end 
I had a lot of fun painting this little guy. If you're gonna paint him too, let me know. You can tag me over on Instagram or link it down below in the comments. I would love to see it. And if you're still watching, I want to thank you very much for watching. I also want to thank my Patreons, Prozu, Hans and Allison for supporting me over on Patreon. And supporting this channel in that way and I hope I will see you next time bye